Hey there, welcome back everybody. This is Dan with PlantAbundance.com. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a highly effective method for harvesting worm castings or separating the castings from the worms. As you can see here, we got some really great stuff. So the materials I utilized for the project were a shovel and a wheelbarrow, a couple lids from some 25 gallon Rubbermaid containers, a homemade compost sifter using quarter inch mesh, a 15 gallon rubber feeder pan, a 25 gallon Rubbermaid container, a 12 gallon storage tote, a 7 gallon kitchen waste container that I cut the bottom out from, a small plastic container I used to separate some of the larger debris from the bin, a couple 5 gallon buckets, a scooper, and a hand rake or cultivator tool. So here's what the bin looks like after being in service for the past 11 months. And you can see all the different food scraps, coffee grinds, coconut coir have all turned into this black, beautiful fertilizer for the garden known as black gold to us gardeners. So to prep for the harvest, I actually stopped feeding the worms in this bin three days ago. And as you can see, we've got plenty of worms in the bin. So after pulling back some of that depleted cardboard that was on the top of the bin, I started to scoop out the contents using a short-handled shovel and dumping it into the 12-gallon storage tote. And as I'm doing this, I'm being extra careful not to pierce the liner, which is an old recycled trampoline. And as I get closer to the liner, I switch over to my rounded edge hand scoop. And once my storage toad is full, I just level it all out using my cultivator and allow it to rest for about 10 minutes. Then, using one of the storage container lids to collect the castings, I carefully scrape off the top layers from the tote. So what's happened is, over the last 10 minutes, those red wigglers have burrowed themselves deeper into the storage tote in an attempt to avoid the light. Now because the red wigglers are surface dwellers, meaning they stay in that top layer of soil, I'm only able to scoop back about 2-3 to three inches at a time. And it's because of their surface dwelling habit that red wigglers are appropriate for vermicomposting in a bin setup. This wouldn't work with night crawlers as they burrow themselves very deep into the soil and would end up dying in a bin like this. So once you scrape down to a point where you start seeing worms again, I like to just agitate the top using my cultivator. And at this time, I'll also remove any larger chunks of food that may be in there. At which point, I'll wait 5 to 10 more minutes to allow those red wigglers to dive back down in an attempt to, again, evade the light. Now, in between time, I could take those castings I just separated and go ahead and sift it out. And I'm doing this using a homemade compost sifter that I made out of a 2x4, some quarter inch hardware cloth, and a piece of 2 inch trim. Very easy construction. So all the larger clumps, food scraps, and even straggler worms, I then dump into a separate bucket. And here's what's left behind this beautiful, powerful worm casting here. Great for the garden. Now since the sifting process takes all but a minute, I like to multitask and get other projects done while I'm waiting for those worms to burrow themselves back down. Here I've got some dried mugwort that I picked a couple months back, and I'm stripping the leaves off to make what I call mug balls. If you're interested in learning more about the mugwort and all of its different uses, I'll include a link to a video that I made on the topic below this video in the description box below. Alright, so it's been about another 10 minutes, so now we're ready to go ahead and scrape down another 2-3 to three inches of worm castings off the top of the storage tote. And as you can see, once again, we're worm free. Now if you're working in a low light area, a nice work lamp will be really helpful in helping to induce those worms to start to burrow themselves deeper into the soil. Here I'm using this snap-on tool LED light. This light's not only great for this project, but the spectrum is also adequate for growing seedlings indoors. I've had great success using it just for that purpose. And after just a few rounds, you can see how we've almost now completely filled up this 15 gallon feed pan with the sifted worm castings. So to make more room for more worm castings, I'm now going to transfer these castings into what's known as a feed sack. These bags are perfect for holding worm castings as they're strong, durable, and allow for a bit of airflow. And to make it really easy to fill, all I'm doing is simply inserting that kitchen waste container which I've cut out the bottom. And this is going to hold the bag open and keep everything rigid so I can quickly fill it up just using a shovel. And as it fills up, you can just lift that waste container up a bit and continue on. So now that we've worked this batch all the way down to the bottom of the tote, there's only about two or so inches left. Let me show you what we got here. As I flip this over, you can see how all the worms have now migrated to the bottom of this tote. At this point, I'm going to call it good and now transfer these worms into a separate container. 
and I did include a little bit of fresh bedding into this container for them. And what this is right here is coconut coir. And this is what I'm using to replace the bedding in the worm bin once it's entirely clean. So the coconut coir that I use comes in an 11 pound compacted brick that needs to be hydrated. And it's important when using the coca coir that you use one that's been double rinsed and has been deemed safe for use with vermicomposting. Otherwise it can contain salts that will be very harmful to your worm bin. So after removing the brick from the package, I'm just going to flood it with 5 gallons of water. And after just a few minutes, after that coconut coir has absorbed most of the water, you can add a little bit more water if you need to. And then you're going to want to break up any large clumps. What you end up with should resemble something like this. A nice fluffy mix that if you squeeze it really tight, you get a few drops of water. You don't want it too soggy, but it's still very springy and fluffy. So in go the worms. And so now that we've cleared the storage toe to the worms, we can start with round two here. Now if you really want to speed up the process, you can get yourself multiple bins going. That way every 10 minutes when you come back around, you can scrape off the top layers of many bins, not just one. And here we are just getting those final bits of worm castings out of the bin. And as you can see, this trampoline is held up really nice. Now this step, although not completely necessary, I'm going to go ahead and do it so you can see what the bin looks like totally clean. And before you do that, make sure you got a bucket under the drain to catch all that runoff. So this is a two and a half gallon square bucket, and this is going to catch all the leachate that drains from the bin. So in the 11 months that this bin was operative, I only had to remove the bucket and pour it out twice for a total of five gallons of leachate. So here's the bin all nice and clean. And let's take a look under the trampoline at the drainage rocks and see what it's looking like under there. And everything's looking great. It's actually really clean. Now I'm just going to take that bucket of runoff water and go feed one of my plants out in the garden. Alright, so now it's time to backfill the new bedding into the worm bin. And just using a simple shovel, I'm going to go ahead and fill it using the entire contents of that 11 pound coconut koi or brick. And be sure to replace your bucket under the drain when you're done. And now that I've finished separating all the castings from the worms from the various bins that I had going, you can see we're getting the same results in each bin. It's some great looking healthy worms here. And now I'm just going to take a moment to combine all the worms into one bin. And once the worms bury themselves back down, I'm going to make one last final scrape here to remove any remaining castings and a little bit of that coconut coir that I added as bedding in the bucket. And I see a few baby worms in that last scrape off, so I'm going to go ahead and put this directly out in the garden instead of trying to sift it out. And now I'm just going to bag up the worms so I can go ahead and weigh it out and see how many pounds of worms we got. You can see here we got about seven and a half pounds, and that's including the remaining castings that are in there. And now the moment that the worms and I have been waiting for all day, and that's to re-release them back into this nice clean bin with fresh bedding. And you can see how the worms have really nested themselves together, creating several big clumps. So we'll just give them a little bit of time to migrate into the new bedding before I feed them again and give them some fresh kitchen scraps. Here we've got some bananas, some veggie scraps, some coffee grinds, paper towels. And then I'm covering the top of the inside of the bin with a fresh layer of cardboard. This just helps it to keep it dark, retain moisture, and the worms will actually eat and degrade this cardboard over time as well. And here's all the castings we ended up harvesting from the system. Again, just utilizing our kitchen waste. I could have been feeding this bin a whole lot more and getting even more productivity. About 140 pounds of castings. I'm very happy with this. And I did put these sacks on the scale and weighed them out just to verify. And I ended up completely filling up this five gallon bucket with some of those clumps, leftover food scraps, and some of the straggler worms. And I just took that out over into my chicken coop area and fed this banana tree here. And that's all there is to it. 
This project did take a little bit of time, all in all about six hours, and that wasn't consistent work, but rather coming back and scraping off those castings every 10 minutes or so. In the end, it was very worth it. This is an extremely valuable resource for gardeners, and I'm proud that we were able to keep those kitchen scraps and such out of the garbage, away from the landfill, and instead upcycled that into this nutrient-dense fertilizer for the garden. And as far as composting goes, I really do prefer to take those kitchen scraps and process them through a worm bin rather than make a pile out in the yard which can attract rodents and such. So thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed today's video, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. I post new videos every week and I'm constantly updating on older projects, so I'd love to have you with us. And with that, I hope this video finds you and finds you well. Out in the world and out in your garden, planting more abundance in your life. Take care everybody, I'll be talking to you again soon.